Hello stranger, I'm back with a new video and this one is a little bit more special as it's the first BR box that I've ever received. So thank you Acosmetics, really honored and overjoyed to get to know more of your brand. So let's dig in and see what surprises await us. What we know so far is Acosmetics uses organic ingredients in their products which they sell at a very affordable price and their manufacturer is FDA approved which they themselves confirmed through Instagram. Check out their IG account, it's in the video description below to see the stuff they've given me or everything else they have in store. Before I start off with my foundation, I thought it would be a good idea to try out a cosmetic skin glass serum first. I received this package around April, so seeing that this 15ml ball they gave me is set to expire on August 2021 makes me wonder how long the shelf life of this really is. The glass skin has a simple set of ingredients. Based on the list, aloe vera is a depigmenting compound, which is what's in charge with the scar lightening and collagen promotion while chamomile works as an anti-inflammatory ingredient, thus smoother skin. If you have really sensitive skin though, you better watch out with the fragrance on this one as the scent is quite strong and it's not specified what's actually in the fragrance. The glass ball is actually thick and it comes with a dropper for easy and hygienic application. The glass skin spring color and jelly consistency was actually such a joy to experience on my arm, it feels really refreshing to put on, but it kind of dries very slow and leaves a smooth but at the same time tacky feeling. Like you know there is a layer of something on your arm, but I figured this is how it feels when aloe vera dries up on your skin. Well, at least on my skin. Unfortunately, my skin doesn't work well with aloe vera, so I can't really try this as part of my skincare routine, but I am curious how it would work as a primer or prep for foundation. As I applied it to my face, my skin actually felt a little hot for a while. I'm guessing it's the aloe vera being rejected by my skin, but there wasn't any tingling sensation or increased redness, so I'm going ahead with this. Contrary to my arm application, the serum was actually absorbed faster by my face. It still did have that smooth yet tugging feeling. I'm not sure if it's just due to the aloe vera and how my skin welcomes it, but let me know on your thoughts about this down below. Now time to get my foundation on. With this serum, my foundation actually goes on a lot smoother and covers my pores seamlessly. Now we're in a very hot country, so I had my foundation on the whole time while I was filming this while my sweat was trickling down, but this serum somehow helped get a hold of my foundation all throughout. Overall, I think this is really good as a foundation prep, especially if your skin loves aloe vera. Now let's move on to the part that I'm quite excited about, which is the brow soap. It comes with a spoolie with hot pink, really stiff bristles. This is actually my first time using a brow soap, so forgive me if I don't do it right. Disclaimer. For now, I made use of my Urban Decay Setting Spray Freebie to wet the spoolie. I've tried water and they work just as fine. So I've been scraping for a while now before the brow soap is picked up by the spoolie. Probably I should have wet the spoolie a bit more, but it's really easy to shape the brows with this. My only concern is how stiff the bristles are in the spoolie. It kind of scrapes my skin as I shape my brows. Probably they can make improvements with the spoolie to make it stiff enough to be able to scrape the brow soap, but soft enough to make it comfortable to use on application. You have to make sure that you brush your brows really well or else you're going to be left with some chunks of the brow soap and you definitely don't want that. Now I also accidentally put some on my lashes and they've dried up already so we're just gonna let them be. The brow soap really holds the brows in place but they can easily be removed with water. Next up is this really yummy looking lip scrub. It's called bubblegum pop and let me tell you, it smells like bubblegum. Let's hope I don't devour this all up. It doesn't matter how I feel 
or if what hurts me. The lip scrub has a really good consistency and has a little bit of pink tint on it, which stays a little bit on the skin. It doesn't feel too rough where your lips would end up with cuts. It also tastes amazing, so it's such a joy using this. Now, I don't usually use lip scrubs, but I suggest using this only once a week or every two weeks. You don't have to lip scrub every day. That's gonna do you more bad than good. I'm so blue, but I'm in with all I do. Ba -ba -da -ba -da -ba. Now that my lips is all prepped and smooth, out with the loose skin, let's start with the lip tint. Now, A Cosmetics has six warrant tint shades, and they gave me three, namely Oriental Red, Sakura Red, and Cherry Blossom. They also have other lip formulations, which you might want to check out in their IG. The lip tints look remind me a lot of the KJM lip tints, which was very popular back then, and they also have this roller to dispense the lip tint. I'm not really a big fan of the roller ball, but application-wise, this doesn't dispense too much product that it would be messy. There's also no leaking, and the pigmentation is very very good as you can see. It it's kind of waterproof, so I want to see if a cleansing balm can remove this fully. I'm gonna use one of my Sephora freebies, which is the Pharmacy Green Clean Cleansing Balm, and hope for the best. So I've been scrubbing and I've washed off the cleansing balm and as you can see, there is still some pretty evident stain. So if you need something that's super smudge proof and will last you all day, this is the one for you. Now let's move on with the lip application and see what shades we have here. First up, Sakura Red is a bright blue toned red. I'm not really a fan of water tints since they don't seem to cling well on my lips based on my many experiences on other brands, but surprisingly, these water tints are different. The pigments cling on better and once they dry up, they are kind of waterproof even on the cheeks. Cherry Blossom looks a lot like Sakura Red on the lips, but with a little bit more hint of pink. Now a trick that you can do to ensure an even application is to let the tints dry a little bit on the lips first before spreading, since this gives the formulation more time to cling on your lips. Since these tints do leave a stain, I couldn't really take the shades I've swatched previously all off, so I decided to just layer the tint swatches on the cheeks. Lastly, we have Oriental Red, which leans more pinkish red and has this wine color vibe. I like that this is a little bit more distinct compared to the first two shades. I did notice that so far, all the shades look quite similar on the cheeks. The differences are a lot more noticeable on the lips. All in all, these war tints are a lot better than the war tints I've tried and have come to dislike before. I'm not a fan of waterproof tints in general since I used my cellar war to remove my makeup so that's a big clash on my preference. But if you are a fan of war tints or have had a bad experience with war tints or need something that's gonna last you the whole day, I highly suggest these war tints from A Cosmetics. Lastly in the box, we have the Cotton Candy Clay Blush. And yes, it smells like cotton candy, really yummy. Everything in this box honestly smells so good, I swear. Now this clay blush comes in a retractable tube. Yes, you can retract it up and down so you don't have to worry about retracting up too much and wasting some product. The cotton candy shade is a pinkish red shade and for its price, 
you get a really great amount of product. It's insane how much there is in here. Now I didn't get to swatch the clay blush on my cheeks anymore since I couldn't get the water tints off but I did get some arm swatches which looks really divine since the color payoff is so good and the formulation just melts into your skin. It does feel creamy when you spread it around which is no surprise because there are oils or emollients in the ingredients. I did notice though, since it's so hot in here where I'm filming, as time passes by the clay blush has a tiny tendency to melt which also makes me worry if this is gonna hold out when you're sweating or if you have an oily skin type. I think this is something that brands have to take note of since our country is not getting any cooler, especially now. However, I am really excited to actually try this out and do some makeup shoots with this since it's actually a pretty color and I do want to see how clay blushes differ from powder, cream, and water formulations. So you better check out my Instagram because I'll be posting more of my thoughts on the clay blush on there and more swatches as well as more shots on the actual cheek application. And that's it for the PR box. Thank you Acosmetics, I really enjoyed trying these stuff out. For a very affordable price, you get to enjoy really good products. My favorite would be the brow soap and the water tints, even though I'm not a fan of water tints because they really exceeded my expectations and I could see myself using it every day, especially if I'm on the go. I highly recommend the glass kit as well as a foundation primer. I think that's gonna work for you so well, especially if your skin works well with the aloe vera and the chamomile extract. I hope you guys found this review helpful or at least found some new stuff you think you would enjoy. That's it for now. Until next time, goodbye stranger.